Welcome to St. Anthony's. Today is the Solemnity of All Saints. Today's Mass is offered for Katie Linnell and All Saints. Let us take a minute to consciously acknowledge that we are in the presence of God and ask Him to help us to hear what He wants to say to us today. The Book of Revelation was written to give hope to the early Christians who were experiencing terrible persecution. Today's first reading contains excerpts from two visions portraying in vivid imagery the salvation of the just. In the first vision, John had a glimpse of the terrible days when a final assault on the earth is brought on by every evil power. But before this terror and devastation happens, the faithful will be marked with the seal of God to protect them and bring them home safely to heaven. The second vision takes place in heaven. These people standing before the throne of God are martyrs, and those who have remained faithful to God during the time of great persecution and trial. This vision is intended to give hope to all who currently all those currently going through a time of great trial and persecution. In the second reading, John speaks of us as children of God destined to see him one day as he is. It is amazing to realize that we are God's children, yet so we are. Our challenge is to become what we are through baptism. Every baptized person is called to a life of holiness. For Thomas Merton, to be a saint himself meant to be himself. I am not called to be like anyone else. Rather, I am called to discover and become the person God called me to be. When I am operating out of my true self, I am glorifying God in the best possible way that I can. Today's Gospel introduces us to the Beatitudes, which are the essential qualities for all seeking to live holy lives. The things they stand for are very beautiful. Things such as peace, goodness, joy, love, gentleness, compassion, mercy, and integrity. A person who lives according to the Beatitudes is already living in the Kingdom of Heaven. Let us pray. O God, you have given us your only Son as a source and measure of all holiness. Through the intercession and example of all the saints, teach us to live as holy people whom you have called into being in him, who lives and reigns with you in the unity of the Holy Spirit, one God forever and ever. Amen. Amen. Him is number 607. Sing with all the saints in glory. We'll do verses 1 and 4.
love of the Son and the Holy Spirit. Amen. Amen. The grace and the peace of our Lord Jesus Christ be you all. And with your spirit. Happy All Saints Day, everyone. Thank Thank you. Thank you, Father. My brothers and sisters, today we gather to celebrate the lives of the saints, their holiness, their virtuousness. But as we celebrate their saints, their, their lives, we also celebrate our own lives, our call to be holy as God is holy. Let us pause for a moment to reflect the times of our lives when we haven't fallen short of what God, call, of the person God calls us to be for these times. Let us ask the Lord for his pardon and mercy. Lord Jesus, Son of God, obedient unto death, Lord have mercy. Lord have mercy. Christ Jesus, Lamb of God, first to rise from the dead, Christ have mercy. Christ have mercy. Lord Jesus, risen Savior, Shepherd of Israel, Lord have mercy. Lord have mercy. May Almighty God have mercy on us, forgive us our sins, and bring us to everlasting life. Amen. Glory to God in the Until we put the seal on the foreheads of the servants of our God. I heard the number of those who had been marked with the seal. 144,000 marked from every tribe of the Israelites. After this I had a vision of a great multitude, which no one could count from every nation, race, <coughs> people, and tongue. 
They stood before the throne and before the Lamb, wearing white robes and holding palm branches in their hands. They cried out in a loud voice, Salvation comes from our God who is seated on the throne and from the Lamb. All the angels stood around the throne and around the elders and the four living creatures. They prostrated themselves before the throne, worshiping God and exclaimed, Amen, blessing and glory, wisdom and thanksgiving, honor, power and might be to our God forever and ever. Amen. Then one of the elders spoke up and said to me, Who are these wearing white robes, and where did they come from? I said to him, My Lord, you are the one who knows. He said to me, These are the ones who have survived the time of great distress. They have washed their robes and made them white, in the blood of the Lamb. The word of the Lord. Thanks be God. Yeah. 
The Lord be with you. And with A reading from the Holy Gospel according to Matthew. Glory Glory to Lord. When Jesus saw the crowds, he went up the mountain, and after he had sat down, his disciples came to him. He began to teach them, saying, Blessed are the poor in spirit, for theirs is the kingdom of heaven. Blessed are they who mourn, for they will be comforted. Blessed are the meek, for they will inherit the land. Blessed are they who hunger and thirst for righteousness, for they will be satisfied. Blessed are the merciful, for they will be shown mercy. Blessed are the clean of heart, for they will see God. Blessed are the peacemakers, for they will be called children of God. Blessed are they who are persecuted for the sake of righteousness, for theirs is the kingdom of heaven. Blessed are you when they insult you and persecute you, and other every kind of evil against you falsely because of me. Rejoice and be glad, for your reward will be great in heaven. The Gospel of the Lord. Praise to you, Lord Jesus Christ. About nine months ago, a woman, her husband was diagnosed with Alzheimer's. And so she could, she realized that she couldn't take care of him any longer. If he was very forgetful, his health was failing. So he was, after a long agonizing period of time, she decided the, the best thing to do to care for him was to put him in a care facility. Unfortunately, soon after she put him in a care facility, what happened in March? COVID struck. COVID. Yes, we had COVID, which means that she couldn't visit him anymore. At the care facility, she couldn't see him. The only way she could see him was through the glass, the window, that every time she goes, sees him. And every time she goes and see him, what do you think happened? He doesn't know her? Maybe. Yes, he doesn't know her. As a result, what happened? He cried and he's scared of her because he doesn't know who she is. And so it hurt her really bad and she didn't know what to do. So she asked the facility to see if she could come in and see him. She volunteered, but they would of course would let her. She invited, she got desperate. So she you know, wrote to her senators, congressmen, and anyone she could think of. Let me see my husband. Still, they wouldn't let her in. Eventually, after many, many, many months, she was desperate. She saw an opening for a dishwasher at the care facility. What do you think she did? She took the job. Do you think she liked washing dishes? No. She did not like washing dishes. But she chose that to do that job so that she can get in and see him. That's her ulterior vote, you know, to, to do the job. So she accepted and finally now she can finally see him and and when she sees him face to face, there's a difference in him. He finally be able to see her day, you know, every time she works, she, he feels more comfortable now that there's no more mirror, there's no more glasses there, glass between them, there's no more big wall. And now he can finally eat, sleep and feel better. He's getting better now. Would you say, what would you call this woman? Would you say she's a saint? Probably. She's a wife. She's a good wife. She's a good wife, a devoted wife. But, you know, many of us would probably say she's very saintly. When you think about it, what is the definition of a saint? Thinking of others. Thinking of all a holy, virtuous person. Presumably, after this life, where would they be? In heaven with God. You know, oftentimes, you know, we forget that's what we're called to be. And every time I look at you guys, you know what I see? Work or you don't want to know? <laughs> a work in progress. A work in process, a say to be. And that's what I see you. I'm like amazed. And I'm like, wow. You're like, the, the, the lady, the, the story I described, I see it in your life. And you know, the, 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 
does it for it to be holy and virtuous? Does it happen by accident? Does a person pour born that way? No. 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 Then how do they become virtuous and holy? Self denial. Each day. Dedication. Dedication, self denial, and all those things. What they have in common is an intentional act, right? Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. It's an intention. It doesn't happen by accident. It starts with a following, doing the will of God, loving God, loving neighbor. And today, Jesus gives us the beatitude, another word for beatitude, for, for blessing, is happy. We hear a beatitude, blessings, happiness. Happy are those, what is the first one? Poor, poor in spirit. spirit. Poor in spirit. What does it mean to be poor in spirit? You have no hope. You have no hope? Well, if you don't or have any hope, then why would you be happy? It means seeking God. That's right. It's a recognition that you are poor without God. That you, mm -hmm. that everything you have come from God. Poor in spirit to realize that, you know, I'm really poor, even though a person who is spiritually poor, does that mean that they have $2 in a bank account? No. No, it means that they recognize that everything they have, $2 or $2 million, comes from God. Everything they have comes from God. It's a recognition. Yes. And they're thankful for that. The second blessing, happy are those who mourn. Who mourn. Who mourn. And thus they will be comforted. Mourning. Is that an oxymoron we hear? For they will be comforted. How does that happen? Mourn applies to what? Grief. To grieve. Yeah. Grieve a loss of a loved one. Yes. Their loss of a loved one. But how would they be not only a loss of a loved one, but the scripture also mourn for one's own sin. A recognition. Yes, I'm a sinful person. That God is good to me. And how would they be, would they be comforted? They will be forgiven. They will be forgiven. And those who mourn the loss of a loved one. They'll be reunited, they'll be reunited. They will be reunited again. Till we meet again. Imagine when a person believes that in their heart. And knowing that, yes, I will see this person again. I will see my loved one again. It's a very comforting Covering knowledge to know that this life is not all there is. There is something beyond this life. The third? Blessed are the meek. Blessed are the meek. When you think of meek, what do you think? Hmm? Poor. Gentle, humble. Joe, gentle, humble. Where does that gentleness and humbleness come from? Love of God. The love of God, but it's also recognition that, you know, a proper place, that my self-worth come from where? The from the Lord, that I'm not, I, I'm not a proud of everything I do, because ultimately, everything I do is a gift from God. And everything I have, ultimately, is to be given back to God. The other one, what is, what, how many, uh, which one blessing are we on now? Four. The fourth, what is the fourth blessing? Thirst for righteousness. Thirst and hunger for righteousness. What does it mean to thirst and hunger for righteousness? For justice. For justice to do God's will. Mm -hmm. To justice to do God's will. And the sixth one? Or the fifth? Merciful. merciful. What does it mean to be merciful? To forgive others when you unjustifiably seek revenge or that your intentions perhaps seek revenge, but you are merciful because? Because God is merciful. Because God is merciful. Seventh? Clean the little heart. What's that? Clean the heart. Purity of heart. What does it mean to be purity of heart? To be innocent. To be innocent of heart, not to be devious. Have you ever met someone who is very innocent of heart? 
Mm-hmm. Pure of heart, and it's right. Wow! I can't believe you know this person is not devious. You, what you see is what you get. The blessing after that, happy, peacemakers. are the peacemakers. What does it mean to be a peacemaker? Stop arguments. Don't tell them. Find solutions. Finding solution, <laughs> bringing people together. And, and what the blessing after that? They'll be called children of God. They'll be called children of God. And blessed are the peacemakers. Blessed are those who are persecuted. You know, when you think about the beatitude, are there many people who, who live this? There's more than we know. There's many of you guys who live it in your own life. And oftentimes, you know, we fail to see that in our own life and see in our community. You know, when you look at the news, sometimes, I don't know about you, but it's, it's hard to see that in action, in politics, in the government, in, in whatever, in the larger world. But if we, but, you know, it's there. That's what God calls to be. And, you know, I don't know about you, but a friend of mine always jokes when I do something. And he always says, well, don't worry. Your reward will be great in heaven. And you know what my my thought my thought was? Let's find out. Let it be attitude. They won't do. For your reward will be great in heaven. What is our common response when someone tells you, Shirley? Or no? Sorry, she, I don't know my hearing aid did. Okay. I you have to, I'll answer you. Guess what? I'll yell at you. Okay. <laughs> when someone tells you. When you did something and you had a hard day, sacrifice for something, you know, did something nice, and someone tells you, don't worry, Shirley, your reward will be great in heaven. What are your thoughts? I don't want to hear it right now. <laughs> because? Because I have to get back on the right track with God. Okay. You know what my thoughts are when I'm annoyed at that, when, they, when I do something, they tell me, yes, don't worry. When I do a good deed, they'll tell me, don't worry, your reward is great in heaven. My thought was, I don't, I want it now. What do you mean, heaven? That's a long time. I, well, maybe theoretically a long time, but. Yeah. Well, I mean, I want it now. Isn't it what, that's the common response for us? Yeah. That we want it now. But you know, you've lived the beatitude, the blessings right now. Happy are those who do these things. It's already. In your life, you're already achieving this happiness, that joy that comes from God, that only God can give. And the question is, do you believe that? Yes. Yeah. A few of you guys do. Yes, we believe it. We follow it very closely. Yeah, do we really follow it? Do we live it each and every day of our life? And you know, when we celebrate the life of the saint, it's not only about their life. What is it really about? Also, it's about following, yes, being inspired by their life. It's to be inspired by each other. And I have to tell, laugh about this because the other, a while ago back, one of the kids I know who's watching an online mass says, Why do you always pick on Shirley? Of course, never met Shirley in my life. This is the kids who live in Wyoming ask, Why do you always pick on her? And I always say, Well, you know, well, first of all, because she can take it, you know. She's fine. She'll, I give it right back to she'll give it back to me. That's right. And the, and I, the reason I brought it up is the things you do, and you're like people who don't even know you are inspired by your life. When I tell them, you know, Shirley, you know, you know, I don't know if you realize this. All this time I've been here, she hasn't even seen me at all, even though she sits in the front pew. You know why? She can't see. She's blind. But she can see the glory of God. And every time I, I t- say, yeah, well, we all have of other people, you know, every time I see Tim, I have to confess to Tim because I live right. Every time you park your car, I see you walking out and packing in your car. And how long did it take you to get into the car and go? Quite a while. Quite a while, about half an hour, more or less. Yeah. Not that I time you, but it's been quite a while. I'm thinking to myself, Boy, talking about patience, you know, you know, getting into a car. That's a lesson that I learned from you guys. You know, those are just a few examples. Or, well, I'll pick one more person. Janice. What do you guys are impressed about Janice? 
Everything. Everything. Amazing. Yeah. <laughs> what one thing you can think of? The way she takes care of Dean. Yeah, the way she takes care of Dean. Now, of course, for all those who do not know on the side, Dean is is quadriplegic. She's he can't move in a wheelchair. And the reason I brought up is because, well, you guys see it. You guys don't have to wait for me to tell you, do you? Yeah. You're inspired by that. Yeah. And you know, th these are some of the examples. I can go on and on and on. You know that, right? There's so many more examples of, of people who live holy and good life. And whether you, you, may, not, you, may, you may not realize the impact you have. Tim, you probably don't realize the impact you have on me. The teacher patience that I, every time you get in the car, I see you. Or, you know, the way you guys love each other. The way the little things that you do for each other is an act of love for each other. Everything we do has an impact. Whether we choose to do it, whether it have a good or bad impact, depends on who. It depends on us, on ourselves. And so today, my brothers and sisters, today, I invite you to not only celebrate the lives of the saints, but you're also your own life. The gift that God has given you. The call that God has given you. As we can see today in the book of Revelation, all the people gathered together today, what were they wearing? White, white, robes. white robes. And what does the white robe symbolize? Purity. Purity, Purity. Happiness. happiness, but also their baptismal garment. Their call to holiness. You likewise in your own life. Do you have, do you also wear your baptismal garment? Yes. You do. By your baptism. For some faith, well, the Mormons, they still wear it, do they? Throughout their life. They wear, they wear angel caps. Yes, it's a reminder of them. Undergarment. But you, in a sense, when you're baptized, you have the baptismal garment, the call of holiness, the call to be. Not only the call, but the, the, real, the reality of being children of God. And so today, my brothers and sisters, I just invite you to live out that call joyfully, peacefully, so that you and I truly may be instrument of peace and healing for one another. Amen. Let us together confess our faith. I believe in one God, the Father the Almighty, maker of heaven and earth, of all things visible and invisible. I believe in one Lord Jesus Christ, the only begotten Son of God, Born of the Father before all ages, God from God, light from light, true God from true God, be God to not made, consubstantial with the Father, through him all things were made. For us men and for our salvation, he came down from heaven, and by the Holy Spirit, who was a part of the Virgin Mary, and became man. For our sake, he was crucified the conscious Pilate. He suffered death and was buried, and rose again on the third day, in accordance with the scriptures. He ascended to heaven, and is seated at the right hand of the Father. He will come again in glory to judge the living and the dead, and is king of the land of the land. I believe in the Holy Spirit, the Lord and the giver of life, who proceeds from the Father and the Son. Who with the Father and the Son is adored and glorified, who has spoken through the prophets. I believe in one holy Catholic and apostolic church. I confess one baptism for the forgiveness of sins, and I look forward to the resurrection of the dead and the life of the world to come. Amen. The saints in heaven intercede for us and with God, who hears every prayer that the worldwide church will always draw strength and perseverance as exemplified by all the unnamed saints who stay true to their calling let us pray to the lord lord hear our prayer that all who suffer the violence of war be blessed with everlasting peace 
Let us pray to the Lord. Lord, hear our prayer. That all who hunger and thirst for righteousness be blessed with the fullness of truth. Let us pray to the Lord. Lord, Lord hear our prayer. That all who grieve the loss of a loved one be blessed with healing and acceptance. Let us pray to the Lord. Lord, Lord hear our prayer. prayer. That all who gather at this feast be blessed with unity in Christ Jesus. Let us pray to the Lord. Lord, Lord hear our prayer. Holy, immortal God, you preserve your people in time of trial. Hear our prayers, which we join to those of the saints. We ask this through Christ our Lord. Amen. Amen. Our presentation against him is number 611, Where My Father Lives. members of the church, through whom you give us in our frailty both strength and good example. And so we glorify you with a multitude of angels and saints, as if one voice of praise we acclaim. <laughs>
are these gifts we pray by sending down your your spirit upon them like the dew fall so that they may become for us the body and blood of our lord jesus christ at the time he was betrayed and enter willingly into his passion he took bread and giving thanks broke it and gave it to his disciples saying take this all of you and eat of it for this is my body which will be given up for you in a similar way when supper was ended he took the chalice and once again giving thanks he gave it to his disciples saying take this all of you and drink from it for this is a chalice of my blood the blood of the new and eternal covenant which will be poured out for you and for many for the forgiveness of sins do this in memory of me The mystery of faith. Jesus Christ. Through him, with him, and in him. O oh God, Almighty Father, in the unity of the Holy Spirit, all glory and honor is yours forever and ever. Peace and unity in accordance with your will, who live and reign forever and ever. Amen. 
Amen. The peace of the Lord be with you always. Amen. Let us offer each other a sign of peace. Shalom.
Be sure to pick up your Word Among Us for November issue. If you haven't received, if you haven't gotten it, you know what you need to do. It's available in front of the church and also Mind's Asian Market. And also the latest Catholic <laughs> Central issue is also available for you to pick up. And if you would like to join us for live streaming Mass, that's available at 4 p.m. each Saturday on our Facebook and webpage. You're welcome to do that. And remember, join us for our Bible study uh, each Wednesday at 3 p.m. And also, if you have not received a bulletin or other email notification, we may not have your correct email address or don't even have it. If you'd like to receive online wonderful online bulletin and other information, email our parish and we'll, and we'll do that for you. Also, many thank you for your support during this time, trying time for our parish, for your own financial support and also prayers. It keeps us going, so thank you for that. And remember, if you'd like to make a mass intention, email, uh, you can snail mail or make your or email your request to the office. We have a song for you too. This one's courtesy of Stella. Yes, Stella is a perfect friend of this one. <laughs> one, two. One, two, three, four.
We implore your grace. So coming to perfect holiness in fullness of your love. We may pass from this pilgrim table to the banquet of the heavenly homeland through Christ our Lord. Amen. Amen. The Lord be with you. And with your spirit. May the Almighty God bless you, the Father, the Son, and the Holy Spirit. Amen. Amen. Go in peace, love, and serve the Lord. Thanks, Thanks be to God. God. Say Lord, the Archangel, the Nemesis of Adam, be our protection and the wickedness of the devils of the May God forgive you and be humbly pray. And do thou, O Prince of the Heavenly Host, by the power of God, cast into hell Satan and all the evil spirits who walk throughout the world, seeking the ruin of souls. Amen. Our closing hymn is number 726, Lead Me, Lord.